on. Uh, our next speaker is Dr. Pa uh, uh, Alosikora from Technical University of Berlin. Uh, and, and, okay, uh, Dr. Sikora, or please, uh, you're free to, to give your talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we have changed a little bit order, but sorry for connecting a little bit late. Uh, so I would like to show you a little bit different study since I'm a civil engineer, not a chemist. So maybe you will find this interesting how we use the nanoparticles. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, can you please uh, speak a little bit slower? Because uh, since uh, it, uh, so, so, since the connection uh, is quite low, uh, oh, we're we'll, we'll losing some words, some of your words. Okay. Let's hopefully, uh, and, yep. hopefully okay. you can uh, hear me better now. Uh, yeah, we we'll hear you better. Thank you. Okay. So I would like to speak a little bit about the effect of nanoparticles on the on the properties of 3D printable cementitious material. As I said before, I'm a civil engineer, so. As engineers, we're trying to apply these materials and not going too deep in the chemistry of them, but we're trying to utilize them in the engineering element. And what this additive manufacturing is, this is basically a technology which builds a solid part layer by layer process. And you know, in conventional concrete construction projects, more than 60% of the total cost spent on the formwork and the labor. But with 3D printing technology, you can actually uh, ignore these uh, these requirements, and we can actually pre-print the, the concrete with uh, with the with the use of the machine. And here you have the example of one of the first applications, 3D printing technology, to build uh, elements out of such concrete uh, in Dubai. So, what is the difference between 3D printed concrete and the normal concrete? Well, uh, they actually, although they both consist cement, they are, they are kind of uh, different materials because uh, they should have a different property than that of the conventional concrete. So they should be easy extrusive. We have to have a good pump, pump ability of such material. They should have low slump. That's mean the material is not, not flowing. It is stable. They should be well buildable. That's mean we can put the layer on each layer, uh, like here, choose the example of the stable layer. So we can put each layer of the concrete on the top and we should obey, we, we should avoid having the compressed layer because then the properties are free. And obviously, since this is a 3D printed concrete, it should have a fast setting and a very good early mechanical strength. So, this, uh, so the process is very fast of building this layer. Uh, so this is a big challenge now about 3D printing of concrete because there is no standard, no universally accepted agreement. Uh, what kind of material we should use, how, what kind of design procedures we should use to develop such, uh, such a concrete mixture. So here's just an example of the three mixtures which are used for 3D printing. And this is the normal concrete. So what we can see here, what is important, in such 3D printed concrete, we have a huge amount of powders. So like cement, so additives, silica fume, fly ash. Uh, and we have only fine aggregates. So, so a small sand particle. While in case of the normal concrete, as, as you obviously know, there's a, there's a higher amount of the coarse aggregate and fine aggregate. So this is actually around 70% of the normal concrete. Since we put so much cement and a different fine material, we have some challenges associated. So the first of all, we have a formation of the void. We have a high shrinkage. There is a deformation of and instability of the layers. We have the pores anisotropy. Since we are printing the material, the pores are uh, organized in a certain order. I will talk about it later. And we have some problems with compaction between layers. So uh, here's the example, uh, here's the Gartner hype cycle from 2014, showing the macro 3D printing as the, one of the innovation triggers, but it's already 2020 and we have already first application 3D printed concrete. We have some elements like here or some columns which are, which are printed and I already used. Uh, but why nanoparticles? Why they are so interesting for us, for civil engineers? Uh, why we can, why we should use them, or why why we want to apply them? So, well, the first of all, uh, the high volume, to, the high volume to surface area ratio is very important for us. As you can see here, the, the nanoparticles 
are much finer than the other uh, size of the, the, the other uh, constituent of the concrete. That means they have a very good uh, filling effect. They improve the microstructure. They refine the microstructure. They make it more, uh, more compact. In addition, the nanoparticles have a significant effect on the rheology of the concrete. The interaction between cement goes a significant uh, acceleration of the cement hydration process. So these materials, especially uh, silica nanoparticles, different clay nanoparticles, uh, they are, have very significant effects on the early properties of such concrete. So what we did in our study, we have included colloidal silica in different amounts uh, of the binder to the standard uh, cementitious mixture. So we, we developed a mixture for 3D printing, which is consisting of cement, limestone filler. This is important because of the high amount of the powders. Cement is extremely expensive comparing to other materials. So we have included the limestone filler, almost, let's say this is the ratio, they are, they are one to one almost. Then we have a fine silica sand, and we use a PCE super plasticizer, the quantum gum, to increase the, 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 the thickening agent to produce such a printable mortar. And here you have the example of the printed element. We have developed the coat. Uh, we have developed the coat to print such element. This is just an element in size of, let's say, four by four by four. Uh, but we later on used it to evaluate the microstructure of such printed element. Here's the example how we have uh, evaluated the element. And you can clearly see even here that there is a certain uh, anisotropy of the pores which occurs during the 3D printing process. And what is important for us, uh, we would like to decrease the amount of these such pores, anisotropic pores in the mixture. So we have analyzed the fresh properties of such mortar. We have evaluated the hardness properties of such mortar. And then at the end, we have analyzed the microstructure of the printed elements. So uh, here's the hydration result of the hydration study. What we can see here, here's the reference mortar, here the zero NS. So let's say NS means nanosilica. And we can clearly see that with addition of nanosilica, the hydration process is much faster. And also the peak is much higher. That means the, the acceleration of the hydration process when the nanosilica is present in the mixture. And this is very important for us. This mixture is uh, reacting faster. And this can be also visible here uh, with, the, with the penetration measurement. We have evaluated strength development in early ages such as cement mortar. And you can see very clearly that addition of nanosilica is, is accelerating the, the, the setting time or the, hard, or the hardening element, which is very beneficial for us. And yeah, another aspect which is very important, as I said before, is the effect on the rheology. So increasing the dosage of silica increase the shear stress of such mortar. This is very important for us because this gives us indirect information. That theoretically, uh, we can print more layers or the layers are more stable when we print them. Actually, we have a kind of linear effect of adding nanosilica. And But on the other hand, there is some kind of drawback because of that since uh, the, the shear stress is increased and since we affected the neurological properties, we might have a problem with pumping out the material from the nozzle. So pros and cons of adding nanosilica. Uh, here we have the example of the, here we have the result of the setting time. And we can clearly see that the setting time of the 3D printed mortar is increasing with adding nanosilica. This is good for us. That means that, that the mixture is setting faster. So we can put more layers, and we are sure that, that the mixture will be hard enough if we put another layer. The, but however, one of the drawbacks is that the open time between for printing has been decreased. Here, time, the open, let's say the open time for printing has been shortened. So as you can see, it depends how much of the nanosilica we will add, whether this is so-called call it optimal value or we exceed it, we might have some different effects. Here's the results of the hardness property. What happens uh, with inclusion of nanosilica? Well, we have definitely higher compressive strength. Very important for us engineers that the compressive strength has been increased after adding some uh, certain amount of the nanosilica. But at the end, as you can see here, the value of compressive strength increased. I will talk about this a little bit later. Here 
we have the transport property. We can call them durability related property. Here's the water accessible porosity, the water absorption coefficient. And we can clearly see that with addition of certain amount of nanosilica, we have improved the say water tightness such concrete. Why it happened? What is the reason? So if we include the nanosilica to the cement we are refining the pore structure. We are making the structure more compacted. We are dividing uh, the big pores into a smaller one. So yeah, the structure is more, more refined. Uh, but however, as we can see here, even though we have included higher amount of silica, the porosity, the material has been increased. But if we go deeper into the evaluation, we can see that those pores, which we consider as the beneficial for concrete, the amount of them, increased. That's the reason, despite uh, the increased porosity, that still the durability related property has increased. It's a good information, although the strength increased. So uh, here's the result of the, the microstructural study of such, such concrete elements. Here we have the result of the mean pixel value, the specimen height. What does it mean? We are analyzing the average pixel size in in the entire cross section of the specimen. This result here shows that, uh, in general, we have relatively a homogeneous specimen. These changes are not significant to say that we had some problems with printing. It doesn't matter if we included nanosilica or not, our mixture was satisfied. You know, it, was, it was good for, for printing. Here we have the frequency of the pores. What we can see here is the fact when we increase the amount of nanosilica, we have a higher frequency of certain force. That means the amount of the nanosilica was exceeding, let's call it an optimal value of, of, of yeah, the amount of silica. So uh, we have performed evaluation of the microstructure of the, the printed mortar. We have evaluated, we have adapted lineal path, path functions to analyze the, the force distributions in the different directions, so in x, y, z axis. And what we have found out, so here's the specimen without nanosilica, here's the specimen with 2% nanosilica. And we can see that the difference here between uh, the, the pores uh, is it's higher. Well, what, what does it tell us? It tells us that the anisotropy of the pores in the specimens, which are not containing nanosilica, is much higher than in the case of specimens containing nanosilica. This means the nanosilica enables us to produce more buildable mixture and the pores are more. There you go. Here's the example of the of the STM images, concrete. This is the concrete element, and we can see these kind of elongated flat pores which occurred during the printing process. In the specimens containing a certain amount of silica, obviously we also find them everywhere, but we also see much more these spherical pores, which are let's say beneficial. But what happened when we exceed the amount of the nanosilica? We have increased uh, porosity in the specimen. This is most probably happens, as I said in the beginning, if we inc increase, if we put too much amount of the nanosilica, the, the rheological property, shear stress is too high. That means we have a big problem with printing out these elements, which cause basically in, in, intruding the air, the mixture. That means the, the, the voids are formed in the specimen, which most probably resulted in decreased compressive so from the result of compressive strain, that the specimen was more porous. Also from the MIP results, the mercury intrusion porosity, we also found out. So let's go to the conclusion. So what we found out is to include the nanoparticles to the 3D printed element. So first of all, they accelerate cement hydration process. Very important for us. Uh, secondly, they affect the urological property, increasing the mortar yield stress. Which gives us a good good uh, possibility to to increase the capacity to clear another another additional layers. But we have to keep in mind that if we exceed the amount of the nanosilica, we'll have a problem with pumping out that material. Mechanical properties and the durability related properties increase improved, and then the micro CT and SDM studies confirmed that adding the nanomaterials. 
to the three different elements helps us to to, to improve uh, the buildability of the mixtures. So we we have a lower force in the in such elements. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I would like to thank my colleagues uh, who are working uh, with me on this topic, and I would also like to acknowledge the funding which is done within the Marie Podolska project. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for your talk. It was very interesting, and uh, we have a question from our conference hall. Uh, please, uh, Oksana. Uh, maybe uh, thank you very much again for interesting talk, and maybe you can uh, give uh, us a small comment uh, that about uh, minimal, uh, we can say size of pixel for additional manufacturing. It means that uh, how complex detail. Um, detailed things uh, uh, actually we can uh, print it. Yeah, so thank you for your question. That's very interesting. As I said, it, this actually depends uh, on the device which we are using to print. So, uh, well, obviously with, with cement or as a civil engineers, we are not uh, we are not interested in the small elements. Yeah, we are looking for something big or something huge. So, uh, I don't know exactly are there any people interested in 3D printing uh, very tiny elements from, 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 from cement material. But uh, I would say we can, we can print in the, in the current state of knowledge, usually print, let's say the cement base, let's call it cement with water. So very homogeneous material. We can print uh, the layers of around few millimeters. What we usually have five millimeters, 10 millimeters, something like that. But uh, if we print it from the mortar or concrete, we can make a layer say, of four centimeters or something. Like that. So these are the usual four or five centimeters. These are the usual sizes of such printed layers. But as I said, it really depends on the device which you will build. And obviously, maximum particle size needs to be used. Yeah? So if we have a sand, we cannot print such a small element because sand particles, they have a certain size, which has to be extruded. Thank okay, you. thank you for your uh, arms, uh, sir. Uh, and uh, uh, we have to move on. Unfortunately, we, uh, we're out of time. Um, so unfortunately for now, uh, no, uh, we don't have, have time to questions. If you want to answer some questions, you could reply it on YouTube. Or there are, there are uh, one more question. Uh, 